Hello, Rob here, and welcome to R&B Reviews. Today, I'm going to review an important part of not only silent movie history, but Sherlock Holmes film and TV adaptation history as well. I'm going to be reviewing the Sherlock Holmes from 1916 starring William Gillette. Now, uh, before I review the movie, I'm going to go ahead and get into a bit of the backstory about why this movie is uh, significant in its place in Sherlock Holmes' lore history. Um, this isn't the first Sherlock Holmes um, feature ever made, nor is it the first film ever made with Sherlock Holmes. Uh, that distinction actually goes back to 1900 when there was a one-minute short film called Sherlock Holmes Baffled. But in 1912, there was a series of short films from a French studio called Eclair that made From the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I believe there was like uh, 12 episodes, but one of them, The Copper Beaches, still survives. And in 1914, in England, the Samuelson Studios made an adaptation of A Study in Scarlet, but that film is lost. But this film is significant because it was the first American Sherlock Holmes feature, and it's the only film where William Gillette plays Sherlock Holmes. Now, some of you are probably wondering, William Gillette, who is, who is he? Why is, why is he important? Basically, in 1899, he wrote up the play Sherlock Holmes, which was very popular, and he toured with it for a very long time. He played the role about 1,300 times. Um, he did it from 1899, toured America, Canada, and England in the role, and I believe he stopped doing it like roughly before the 1920s. So he was considered to be the Sherlock Holmes, just like many people consider Basil Rathbone or Benedict Cumberbatch or Jeremy. Brett or Robert Downey Jr. to be the Sherlock Holmes for that particular generation. And the film was made by SNA Studios. The studio was formed by Bronco Billy Anderson that um, created westerns. And for a while, Charlie Chaplin had spent a year there between his time at Keystone Studios with Max Sennett and before he went off to uh, make films with Mutual. Now this ver film was shot in Chicago and many of the actors who were in this movie were part of uh, William Gillette's what was then current farewell tour uh, doing the play Sherlock Holmes and he actually kicked off that tour back in 1910. <laughs> so you guys are familiar with the whole I'm going to go into retirement and then a few years later they come back sort of thing. Kind of like with a lot of rock acts and bands. Now this film was considered lost until 2014 when a dupe negative was discovered in France in the vaults of an archive. It underwent digital restoration by a partnership between, pardon me my pronunciation, the Cinematique Francais and the San Francisco Silent Film Festival. The restored film premiered in France at a silent film restoration festival in 20, January of 2015 and had its U.S. debut at the San Francisco Silent Film Festival in May of 2015. So how did it end up in France? Well, basically it was cut up as a movie serial because at that time France was in love with the whole mystery thriller serial format and which, so that's how it got, ended up over there. Now, what is this movie about? Well, the story is Alex Faulkner has letters written by a crown prince who wrote these indiscreet letters to Alice's sister who died of a broken heart, and it will cause grave international problems. So Sherlock Holmes is hired by solicitors of the prince to retrieve these letters, but Holmes's arch enemy, Professor Moriarty, wants them to in order to blackmail the prince. Now, this movie is not really a mystery, it's more of a melodrama. And there's not really a whole lot of suspense or shadowy photography that people think of when they think of mystery, but it does have some twists and turns in the plot. Now, I was familiar with the movie, uh, sorry, the play that the movie is based off of since I had seen it performed before. Um, the, the, this movie keeps the serialized format that was used in France. Um, I'll get into, you know, what I thought of it doing them that way later on in the video. But I really liked how the film introduces Holmes and the characters throughout the film. Um, in the beginning, Holmes um, is seen established a certain way to help the audience get the idea of who he is. And I liked how the film introduced the character, not only him, but other characters visually through their makeup and facial expressions to help people remember, you know, who these characters are. I did like the use of the title cards here, although some of them were more wordy than others. Some silent films overuse them and others simply just let the viewers watch and let them learn as it goes on, but I think we got just enough of what we needed here. Translating the play into a silent film must not have been easy because plays are obviously more verbal and silent film is obviously more visual. But I think the writers did a good job at adapting it. Uh, the writers opened the film up a bit more and we got more of a backstory and we see um, how things would be off stage that the actors are describing on stage. So that was a big benefit. Um, I thought the actors did very well in their roles considering for many of them this was their first and only film appearance. They were more restrained and not over the top 
and they were able to get their points across. One of my favorite characters in the movie was Mr. Larrabee, who is one of the people holding Alice hostage, trying to get her to let him have the letters. I really liked William Gillette as Holmes. He's very calm and collected compared to the more energetic portrayals of later Holmes like Basil Rathbone and Benedict Cumberbatch and Robert Downey Jr. I also like the subtle reactions that he has to his surroundings. For example, there is a scene where he is in his flat in Baker Street and he's thinking about Alice, and Billy the houseboy uh, keeps asking him questions, and he just snaps out of it and uh, answers his questions. I like that Moriarty seems more like a regular person and not using a lot of heavy makeup like I've seen in other um, adaptations. I thought the actress that played Alice brought energy to her damsel in distress role. The camera work is efficient. While there are some static shots, there are some points where the actors are moving and the camera follows them as well. There's also close-ups and there's even the use of cross dissolves between shots. While it may seem simple, I found it to be very effective. The sets and costumes I thought were well done. The movie does move at a deliberate pace, which has its pros and cons. On the one hand, I felt like it took sometimes it took like it took a while for the movie to get going, and at some points I felt like there were some scenes where I felt like they could have got to the point sooner. But I felt like that because there's quite a bit going on, I felt like the pacing helped in some cases. I think once Moriarty enters the story, I think the movie took off a little bit more, and I actually found the cast to be more livelier in the second half. There were a few moments where I wondered, had I not seen the play, would I have been able to tell what's going on? And the, like I mentioned earlier, the movie keeps the serial format that was used in France, and I thought it broke the flow of the movie, especially when we have the equivalent of a to-be-continued sign, and then we... Um, wonder what happened in the previous episode and I felt like I, it would have been nice if we it, it broke the flow I thought I thought it would have been nice if we just kept it in the feature film format now some scenes I thought translated better to the silent adaptation than others uh, the big scene uh, that's in the play where Holmes and Moriarty meet and Moriarty is trying to get Holmes to back off and not get involved I felt like that scene didn't translate very well because it's a very cat and mouse scene where the dialogue is the main aspect now, how is this film restored? It's great. It's clear restoration visually, and the music that accompanies the movie goes very well with the images, and it's very effective. It uses mainly violin and piano and to add to the period of the story as well as the mood. Now, do I recommend this movie? Um, I would say that I would recommend this movie to silent film fans, you know, fans of Holmes, and maybe people that are uh, interested in the history of Holmes adaptations, both in the movies and on TV. I thought it was worth looking at. I liked the performance. I liked some of the technical aspects. I liked how the, they opened the film up. But I felt like the pace was hit and miss, and I didn't like that they kept the movie serial format from the French release. Um, but the so but the DVD has some goodies as well. It got released by Flickr Alley. Um, the, it has some silent shorts, you know, featuring the character Sherlock Holmes. There's footage of William Gillette, who was a train enthusiast. Uh, there's a newsreel with sound that shows um, his little train that he kept on his property that you could actually ride. And there's even footage of Doyle, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, explaining how he started writing Sherlock Holmes stories and his interest in spiritualism. So overall, I do kind of recommend this movie as a historical aspect, but I felt like there's other Sherlock Holmes adaptations and stories that I think I liked a little bit better. And speaking of Sherlock Holmes, I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan, and I, I grew up watching the character. Jeremy Britt was my Sherlock Holmes when I was growing up. And um, if you're interested in some of the other adaptations, I do have other movie reviews, uh, some of these other ones like Basil Rathbone. I reviewed um, the series... Um, and one of the films from The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I also reviewed another silent film from 1922, and I also uh, reviewed these obscure early British films starring Arthur Wantner that came out in the early 30s. So if you want to check those movie reviews out, you can. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. If you have seen this 1916 silent film starring William Gillette, what did you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? What was your reaction? Uh, go ahead and post your comments and feedback below. I greatly appreciate it. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to be a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you very much for watching.